Hi, I'm Tom Lydon, editor of ETF Trends here in Chicago at the Morningstar ETF Conference. And I'm here with Jerome Schneider, who's managing director of PIMCO. Jerome, thanks for being with us. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate you having me. No, I know you just spoke in, in little concern out there among advisors about what the Fed might be doing and how that might affect their portfolios. Give us kind of the talking points or some of the main points you discussed. Absolutely. The Fed's obviously on the forefront of everybody's mind. At PIMCO, we just actually concluded our cyclical forum where we thought about the strategy relating to the next year or so of portfolio allocations. We think that the U.S. economy is slowly improving, and that's going to obviously going to go into Fed policy going forward. For us, we think the Fed is going to potentially increase rates in mid-2015, but for investors, the volatility that emanates from the removal of quantitative easing and policy measures is going to happen a little bit before that. And as such, there's going to be investors who want to de-emphasize their exposure to interest rate risk potentially in fixed income portfolios, as well as higher volatility asset. So the notion of doing that is actually thinking about how to utilize effectively a fixed income allocation as a potential shock absorber, and more importantly, a short duration or a low duration allocation to an active strategy to do that. And, and that's been the premise of what PIMCO has done on the ETF side. You've been very successful with your fixed income active ETFs. And more importantly, as we're looking at this interest rate headwind, there's a, 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 you know, advisors out there who are starting to take notice and starting to shift money over with the idea that, hey, rising interest rates doesn't always have to hurt your portfolio, right? Exactly. We view, when you look at the volatility of how portfolio performs, a key shock absorber is having a good core fixed income allocation. Yep. Active management allows you to choose how that fixed income management and that allocation is happening. So you might have a allocation to fixed income, but we can help provide those building blocks in terms of your risk attributes and how you build that portfolio and where on the curve are what credit exposures you're gonna take. So we started five years ago at PIMCO creating Mint as our as a, basically a cash equivalent uh, ETF for short-term focused individuals. And we've seen good success in that. It's, it's about a little over $4 billion in size, one of the largest ETFs out there for active management fixed income. And the total industry has taken off as well in the fixed income space. So we think it's a great um, accolade for not only ourselves, but everybody else who's in that fixed income active management space for ETFs. Touch base on money market reform and, and the potential threats there and advisors and their clients are somewhat concerned about that. Well, there's three key points. Number one, the way you manage money for 40 years is changing. People used to use money market funds as their core asset allocation to immediate cash needs. Those are changing with money market reform measures that are going to either, for institutional investors, move from a $1 par NAV to a floating rate NAV, or more importantly, could potentially put up gates for all individual and institutional investors going forward. Second thing is really thinking about structural changes that are going on in the marketplace. There's a supply demand mismatch in terms of money market instruments, and that's creating an overwhelming demand for assets. At the same time, there's not enough supply. Well, what, when that happens, that means the prices have to go up or remain higher than they normally were. So the third point is, even as rates increase, there isn't necessarily safety or attractive options within the money market space. Rates are going to remain subdued, potentially near zero in money market funds, even as rates start to rise. And so they aren't going to be the sources of income that they had previously been. So looking at short-term strategies, low-duration strategies, which offer a good balance of passive focus on and de-emphasizing interest rate risk, but complementary total return through carry and looking at credit options, and do so in a diversified risk-oriented manner, is key to successfully navigating higher interest rate environments. Great, great. And finally, you just launched a new ETF, kind of to partner with Mint. Tell us a little about that. We just launched our new ETF, Elder, L-D-U-R, which is our low duration equivalent to follow our low duration mutual funds, et cetera. And this is really geared toward investors who want to have some income, some total return, and focus on a very minimal interest rate duration. So we find that there's good appetite in looking all throughout the curve in the front end in order to do this. Investors need to be focused not just on yield, but so when they punch up the tickers and understand what their investments are, that might be one thing, but they need to look at the total return of the assets themselves, and there could be huge discrepancies. For us, Elder and Mint offer opportunities which offer unbelievably positive total returns because we're actively managing the portfolio. Whereas in an upward interest rate environment, the yield component of itself may not be enough to overcome the mark-to-market. -market. So for us, Elder and Mint make a, are perfectly complementary. Great, great. Joan, thanks so much for your time today, and look forward to hearing from you more in the future. Thanks very much for the opportunity. Thank you.